Welcome, everybody, to episode two of the Four Tales Caught. Ah, son mm-hmm. of a already, busy. already messing it up. See, I look know, at man. you. Try, try it again. Start it over. All right, all right. Let's do this again. Take two. Welcome, everybody, to episode two of the Four Tales Podcast. I am your host, Kyron Silva, with my co-host, Danny J. Quick, in the building. That's right, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. You've been doing all right. No, as you can tell, I can't talk this morning. It's, yeah, it's man, too it's, early to be doing I, these. I know what it is. You you're still trying to call it the two blurs one comic podcast, <laughs> and it got your tongue tied. So we, when we get that out of your system, it'll be all right. See, now I'm thinking about that video with the tongue and, and going around. No, no, mm. no, no. no. <laughs> but you know, it could be. I'm just excited. Like today is going to be a good day. We got all our podcasts up on Apple and Spotify, and Google, and all that. So I'm excited about that. I was looking at the numbers. We got a decent amount of listeners yesterday, so which is really good. And you know, I'm also excited about our our That's guest good. today. Our guest today is has got me hyped. He's got me excited. I've been up for like two hours just thinking about all the things I want to talk to him about. But before we do that, we if you haven't actually listened to his podcast before, I, I am from Taurus Comics. I'm a writer and artist. Danny is from Fourth Wall Productions. He's a writer, and we are combo creators. The Four Tale Podcast is a podcast that talks to and talks about indie comic books. We get into a lot of the nerdy stuff too, but we're here mostly to talk about comic books, projects, and things about that. And you know, we're here today to talk about a and a book that I'm extremely excited to get my hands on Me and too. that is lumberjacks one and two if you haven't gotten one you can get one i got one before i think it was like two or three years ago i can't remember now but i loved it long time. yeah it, it was way too long it, i don't know we got we, we got to ask him about that we're gonna ask him about it all right well why don't you introduce him why don't you introduce the man all right so what i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna introduce this young man and then i'm gonna you know for the for the sake of journalistic integrity i'm gonna act like i never met him before and ask him the real hard hidden questions so um this young man hailing all the way from durham north carolina they call it the bull city he is uh how old are you morgan 30 32 see he, he an old dude he an old head in the game and uh wait wait wait, 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 wait. 30 is old because i'm older than that by a lot already well, yeah. you live in California, though, so that's different. That's so, true. Whoa. So he's an old head in the game because I know he's older than me. So he's my elder. So I try to be respectful. Um, he is a he is a natural born storyteller. I first met him at Church of Philadelphia, where he was a deacon and would uh, pass around the offering plate. And, you know, I just I just, you know, found that he was a natural storyteller. And I was like, hey, man. I'm working on these comics. I want to see if you can help me out with it. And he told me no. He told me straight up no that he didn't want to do it. But, you know, the the squeaky wheel gets the oil, as they say. So I kept begging him. And uh, here we are uh, years later. And I would like to present to you all Morgan, the Deacon Iverson. Uh, There was so much going on there. (laughs) It was a lot. I I was I was man. That was that was a good intro, though. No, that's, uh, see, that's why you don't let me. Do, that's why Kyron should just do the intros, because I'm I'm always just gonna throw random stuff in there. Hey man, listen, it's nothing wrong with it. I you know I, I appreciate y'all having me on the show. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean Danny is um, yeah he definitely threw a lot of random stuff in there, but it's nothing wrong with that. Um, but how much of that random stuff was true though? Uh, yeah, I definitely told him no, uh, but it was because I didn't know. I didn't grow up reading comics, uh, uh, and I definitely didn't like. I had no concept of black people reading or or writing comics, uh, so the idea sounded like the corniest, dumbest, uh, quite possibly most embarrassing thing that I could have thought about doing. And I was like, "No, nah, I'm not trying to sign up for that." Uh, and you know, over time, uh, I read his uh, his origin novel for Ace Blade, and I loved it. Um, and over time, I mean, the ideas just started coming and growing. And, um, I mean, I have always loved telling stories, um, you know, since I was little and I got away from it in school because I used to get, uh, <laughs> used to get picked on a lot <laughs> when I was little and, uh, the stuff that I was doing creatively, whether it was singing in the chorus or, you know, writing stories or whatever that I would get 
you know, praised for. Uh, at a point, I was trying to distance myself from it because it was getting me beat up. So <laughs> I think over time, it just kind of grew away, especially as I started to uh, get into sports and other stuff. Um, but it came back. Um, and uh, yeah, now, you know, I got stories for everything now. Uh, it's an outlet for me. So I enjoy it. I mean, let's get back into that because you're saying that um, when Danny first reached out to you, you're like, black people don't make comics. So what were you writing before that? Were you writing like sci-fi novels or something or TV shows? What were you doing? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, it was I, I was working on a sci-fi uh, kind of post-apocalyptic uh, story um, about a character named John Martyr. Um, and it was a uh, it was it was. Um, Sci-fi is the best way to put it, but I mean, there were spiritual elements to it too. I'm trying, I can't think of, uh, I think the closest thing to it would have been like a Christian version of Children of Blood and Bone uh, by Tommy Adeyemi. Um, I was working on that. And um, when I met Danny and uh, and I read the novel, um, his, his Ace Blade uh, origin novel. And um, and I, I loved, I loved the way that he had done a novel, but I also didn't know that, you know, he told me he had published it. And I was like, you what? Uh, and I had no idea, like I, it was just stuff that I didn't know was possible. I definitely didn't know, like I said, I had no idea that black people could write comics, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, write comics or had anything to do with comics at all. Cause I didn't read them. So, um, it was a new experience for me. Yeah. That's, I mean, go ahead. Last week we were, me and, um, me and Kai were talking about the same thing. I, I had that same experience, you know, years before when I went to my first comic book convention, I was just like people actually like i didn't know people like regular people made comics you know what i'm saying like i didn't know that i thought it was all you know studios you know marvel and dc like if you can put a put a comic book out you got to have thousands and thousands of, and and that's technically true but you know it's it's really just an eye opening experience to 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 be able to create something so I, i'm glad i'm just glad that you uh that you <laughs> broke down and decided to come along on the journey bro i mean me too now, Morgan, did you when you were growing up, did you read comics at all? No, okay. uh, I didn't read comics at all. So, I mean, um, I, I watched uh, Batman, Batman animated series. Um, I watched Dragon Ball Z, watched Power Rangers. I watched um, X-Men. I watched Spider-Man sometimes. Uh, but, I mean, the cartoons, I love Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and... Uh, um, you know, I love that stuff. I love Tom and Jerry, but I, I, I didn't comics. Like I said, I, I didn't, I don't know that I had access to it. Uh, and no, none of my friends that I knew of were reading comics. Um, so, and I don't know that I don't know if, if there were any comic shops in there or anything like that. So I don't know how I would have been exposed to it outside of like a friend, you know, putting me on to it. So, um, at least you had friends growing up. Cause I only had the one and he definitely wasn't reading comics. So, um, you were more popular than I was in high school. Didn't you? Didn't you do sports in in in, in school too? Yeah, uh, football and track. Um, so I mean, yeah, and like like I said, I, they probably were reading comics. Some of them, you know what I'm saying? But they're my, hiding it, huh? They're hiding it because back then, I mean, it was it wasn't cool to read comics or even watch anime or things like that. It does seem like within the last maybe 10, 15 years, the the nerdiness that you could have and be exposed to has now been able to be more normalized. Whereas before you said you liked something like comic books or anime or even cartoons, you get your ass beat. Quite possibly. That, but that's what I'm saying. It, it was, it was, it was, I don't remember if I used to talk to people about Dragon Ball Z. I know I used to rush home. Once I got on Dragon Ball Z, I used to rush home to see it. And there were days that I rushed home to see uh, Power Rangers. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, I, I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was growing up. You know what I mean? Uh, that I was a huge fan of that. Like the the, the movies, especially, and the video game. The, that video game is still all time. Like I would play that video game right now. Uh, Which one? Uh, Turtles in Time? You talking about? No. Uh, the the joint one like, that, and on the NES. NES. Yes, the one yes. that and, and I mean because I think they adapted that one from the arcade game. Uh, but I'm not sure. I, I I don't remember. I just know I played it in the arcade and I also played it at home. And I love oh. both. You talking about Turtles in Time then? Turtles in Time is the arcade. Time. Yeah. Oh okay, well, yeah. I, I just I just know that I loved 
uh, Ninja Turtles like on a whole nother level. So um, that would have been the closest thing to nerdy that I would have shared with other people outside of, you know, like I said, I used to get beat, beat up a lot, so, you know. Yeah, I used to be the same way, um, you know, growing up. I didn't want to tell people that I was into comic books, things like that outside of my, you know, close personal group. Cause anytime anybody found out anything about that, you get that stigma of being, you know, uncool or whatever. And, you know, being junior high, high school, you wanted to be cool. You wanted to be known. So I, I do like that nowadays. It's all right to show the things that you love and appreciate and not get hazed for it anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely been a huge cultural change. Uh, but I think that's also because, you know, uh, thankfully there were already black people out there uh, in the creative spaces that were doing those things, but we had no idea. Uh, but they stayed in those spaces. And I think it kind of opened the door for the rest of us, not only to like it, but then once you learned that, oh snap, you're producing it too. Like you've been drawing for Marvel and DC and Dark Horse and, you know, all of these companies, like there were people out there, there were artists out there. We just didn't know about them because we weren't supposed to them. And now we're in such like a, a renaissance of, of, um, of black art and, and creation. Um, I love it. Like that's one of my favorite things about the time period that we're in right now as a creative is we finally gotten to the point where whether we get agency or not, whether people are going to give us the money to produce it, uh, people are creating their own ways and creating their own communities. And that's allowing us to get this stuff out here. Um, whether the industry accepts it or not. And now the industry has no choice but to accept it. So, um, and seek it out. I mean, that's the thing that I'm really excited about is, you know, the industry now has realized uh, the cultural change, in my opinion, but that's a political conversation. But uh, yeah, it's just a great time to be a black creative to me. All right. That's that's enough for the cookie cutter stuff. So I got I got some questions for you that I need answers for, bro. All right. I've been I've been following your work for a while. I've seen you online. I've seen you doing your TikTok dances. I've seen your moves. I've seen all that. But I want to know. Two questions. Why is Lumberjack so angry and why do you hate God? Okay. Uh, both of these are dumb questions. So, no, uh, it's not a dumb question. Every time I see Lumberjacks, he's snarling and growling at people. He got flames all around him. He's, he's running towards people with axes. And then you got this character in your comic called The Preacher, this man of the cloth, and you calling him a villain. You saying that he's a villain, man. He out here just all he want to do is get a G6 heli- uh, uh, or a helicopter to, to take missions across the planet to, 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 to spread the word of God. And you saying that he a villain. How, you must hate God. What is going on here, sir? So, so all right, the Lumberjacks question, first off, Lumberjacks are not always angry. Uh, Danny just has some type of affinity that says that Lumberjacks is always angry because Lumberjacks is the type of person that's going to get stuff done if it, if it goes left. You know what I'm saying? If stuff is going left and somebody's harming somebody, um, you're not going to be in the sequel. If it is left up to him, we're not doing this whole police justice system thing because we know that doesn't work. Uh, and you asked for this smoke. So I don't go cause a smoke. You asked for it. So I'm going to give it to you. Uh, hey, stop so, trying to feed that stereotype of angry black men. All right. Yeah. I, I, I don't even pay. I, I, I don't pay it. No, mind, man. Like, OK, so <sighs> Lumberjacks did have a long period of time. And he does. I'm not saying he does not have a, a, a shorter wick than some. You know, because he's been through so much in his life. So the origin novel covers a whole lot of the things that he went through uh, as a kid. You know what I'm saying? He's born Ethiopian royalty, but you, he gets to experience both through history. He, he's not like we are. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that goes back to the thing I'm talking about, you know, the black renaissance that we're in. Uh, and uh, and since you brought church into it, that is a part of this. Like th- because we now have access to Google, because we now have access to uh, other streams of information that we would have never been taught in school. We would have been forbidden to te- get taught in school and, and, our, and our parents weren't going to teach it. More black people of the millennials, the generation and below are starting to learn the truth about our history. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that we were not always slaves. And the narrative in education has always been in this country. You were always slaves. So be grateful for what you have. And Lumberjacks is telling the story to show that number one, not only were we not always slaves, but we've been royalty this entire time. Um, 
and to expose the BS that happens in a lot of African nations and a lot of Arabic nations where, you know, America is extremely guilty of, you know, staging coups. And that's what happens to lumberjacks in Ethiopia, which is what made him a refugee to New Orleans. Um, and because of the things that happened, I don't want to spoil everything, but because of the things that happened, yeah, I don't you think you're supposed to be telling people that. I don't think you're supposed to be telling people that yet. No, no, it's honest. okay. Tell all the details. It's in the origin. It's in the origin novel. There's a coup that's staged, and uh, that is what causes Lumberjacks to have to leave Ethiopia. Uh, and he ends up in New Orleans. And he, when he gets here, he doesn't have anything. His family's gone, and you know he pretty much ends up getting passed from these rich families in New Orleans from house to house. Um, and pretty much, I mean, I, he wasn't so, a slave, but might as well. So basically, you're saying you just said that you didn't want everybody our our history to be seen as slaves, but then you're gonna make a character who's literally a modern day slave who then becomes a superhero. What? How? How? He, how did that happen? He he didn't become a super. So he he he's royalty regardless. So one of the messages that you seem to miss, and that's fine. It's okay. Is that uh. <laughs> He is a he is a prince. He is an Ethiopian prince. Mm -hmm. Him being displaced from his country by evil um, does not take away the fact that he's an Ethiopian prince. It doesn't take away his mantle that his grandfather told him about. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that he's the seventh and last judge on earth. Now, what can change that is him making a decision not to accept that mantle. And that is what we are struggling with with lumberjacks in the novel and that's what we're struggling with in lumberjacks in the comics that's what that's what the lead up is is okay is he going to accept his mantle and what does that look like um and uh you know so he yeah he starts off as that but but he rises through it because of him getting an opportunity and then he becomes an absolute monster beast that he's always been so but he goes through hell like him and his family go through some hell and, and that's covered in the novel and that leads up to the comics so you know in lumberjacks number one you don't see the preacher yet uh, because, you know, we're dealing with injustice in that one. And Lumberjacks number two, everyone who knows me knows I don't hate God. So Danny's just on crack uh, of some sort. Um, and he's just very enthusiastic about your character. He was telling me how much he loves your character. Um, so I, I apologize for my partner on that. No, it's, it's fine. He, 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 yeah, he hate he really hates the preacher uh, on on epic levels. Um, but that's fine. I, I, the goal that I have with the preacher is to somewhat agitate, educate, and and um, and uh, kind of hold a mirror up um, to the church and some of the things that 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 take place in the church. It's not about that's the thing about the preacher. He's he's a microcosm of what I see happening a lot in churches. It's not about it's not about God. It's about the show, and the preacher's perfect for the show. So um, it's I, I don't hate God. I am working, hoping to work on behalf of him through these stories and uh, definitely uh, through the preacher because I want him to conflict people. I want him to trigger people. I want him to make people laugh. Uh, and I want people to listen to his messages. You know what I mean? Because the idea of the preacher came from scripture you know having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof he is the personification of that so um that's another reason i'm excited for people to get to meet him in lumberjacks number two um because hopefully you see the little things that i've been there um are nodding towards some of that something you just said made me think and this is a conversation we had before but um do you think and this is on a more serious note too do you think that people can get um, that they can learn from people like that. Like you, you just said that you want people to listen to the preacher. You want people to hear the preacher's messages. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've worked really hard to put his, you know, the things that he says are biblically accurate, but the way that he acts isn't fulfillment of that. Right. So mm -hmm. he's a, he's a hypocrite in that fashion. But do you think in real life that we can learn from people who do that same thing? Cause the the world is full of people like that presidents politicians um you know boss you might have a boss at your job who you know says oh you need to come in on time and such and such and such but then they late you know people who say one thing and do another do you think that people can learn from um from people like that absolutely uh yeah i mean broken clocks are right twice a day you know what i'm saying so 
you can definitely learn from, there's a lot of different sources that you can learn from. Like I love a line that T.I. had in one of his songs. Uh, I think it was Mr. Miss, uh, the amazing Mr. F up. Uh, I'm, of course I'm a brief, I'm not saying the curse word, but, <laughs> but I, I love that song. Cause he has a line in there where he says, you know, you can learn from anybody, even, even if you just learning what not to do. Um, and the preacher from a biblical perspective, the preacher is a micro is, is a, uh, uh, a picture of the, what the Pharisees uh, and what Jesus uh, admonished them for all the time, because the Pharisees were the religious leaders, and he literally told you what they what they what they show you to do. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, what they tell you to do from a scriptural perspective that I want you to do, but don't do their works, mm-hmm. and don't. So, and he would always get on them for. You know, if you get somebody that actually wants to join the church, you'll make them twice the son of hell that you are. That's why you have to be careful about who you listen to and and and, and things like that. Because to me personally, most people are lazy from a religious standpoint, and especially Christians. Uh, so instead of relying on yourself and your own relationship and your own reading and your own, you know, prayer or whatever it is that you do to connect with uh, your God, um, people want somebody to tell them what to do and what to think. And that's a problem politically too, uh, in America. Like that's why America's in the same shape that it's in. People want to be told what to think and who you decide to trust is where you're going to end up on the spectrum instead of you thinking for yourself and finding the information yourself and then making decisions based on that. Um, hey, don't be talking about my my good country, my good U.S. of A. Man, you go back to Africa where you belong talking all of that nonsense, sir. Hey, listen, can- I, listen, that I have just as much right that that now that's that's something that I've, I've had people hit me with that now. You know what I'm saying? So uh, but <laughs> and, and I and I very seriously thought about, you know, I've, I've thought about like, would you go if you had the money to, that you wanted to get? You know what I'm saying? Would you go back home? Like, would you go back to Africa? Would you go back, you know what I'm saying, and, and build something in another country uh, with the resources that you're able to gain here? Um, and the hard question I had for myself was, uh, I, I don't think I could do it because my ancestors here, I mean, this is home. You know what I'm saying? So my ancestors here did too much and did too much bleeding and sweating and going through hell. Um for me to just leave it all behind and just leave it to the people that hated them and hate me too. I'd be dog. You know what I'm saying? So maybe it's just me being stubborn, but I'm not doing that. I can build it. I can build both. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got two hands, you know what I'm saying? So when I get to the point where I have the money that I, you know, that I anticipate being able to make uh, telling stories and in, in, in different uh, forms, uh, will I have dual citizenship? Yes. Oh, you're trying to make money? You're trying to make money making comics? You don't know that. You don't know about that. You can't make money in comics right now. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, 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 look, it, it is definitely hard to make money uh, in comics. But I mean, my ultimate goal is to, my ultimate goal as a, as a storyteller is to provoke thought, change thought, challenge thoughts, um, uh, validate you know, thoughts, um, just to cause people to think, uh, is one of my major goals. You know what I mean? Like uh, my, my, I, I call them my spirit animals, like my spirit animals or my, or my role models, the people that I look up to for how they write and the way that they approach it, are, you know, Jordan Peele, um, Tommy Adeyemi, Ryan Coogler. Um, those are three of my top that like, I, I, I love, and respect not just how not just that they do what they do, but how they do it, and like what their goal is, and and how they interweave uh, different aspects into their work. And I really, really try to model um, my own style after them. You know, so I want to be able to tell a good story that's entertaining on its on its own, but at the same time, put down some subliminal stuff that if you pick it up, it can it could be life changing. Like Get Out was a life changing movie for a lot of people. Um, Black Panther was a life changing movie for a lot of people. For m- many of us, God knows it was because we hadn't seen ourselves in that role. You know what I'm saying? Um, Tommy Adeyemi, Children of Blood and Bone, absolutely uh, world illuminating because she's talking about it from a, perspe- from a religious perspective that a lot of people aren't aware of. Uh, Those are great stories, too. Yeah, and it's, but that's what I'm saying. So she, all three of those, all three of those 
uh, creators give you an exciting story by itself. Just on the surface level, you're going to be on a ride for the great story. But if you pick up on the subliminal stuff that they're putting down, it can change your life. Um, and that's what I want to do, storytelling. I want to be able to do both. Are you, or that's my goal. A lot of your stories, it seems like they're, they're always going to be based off of political and social um, aspects of our country. Is that really going to be your goal for going forward for everything? I think uh, because those things mean so much to me, like a lot of times, um, I don't know, because I, I do want to challenge myself to write different things. Like I, I definitely at some point want to write a, a deep love story. You know what I'm saying? Um, things that mean a lot to me are what drives me. Like, and a lot of times for my characters and for the stories that I tell and create, uh, it comes from a place of something that I see in the world that bothers me that I wish that I could fix. And I create conduits in order to be able to address those problems or at least illuminate it to the rest of the world. So that's conduits, so, huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. conduits, huh? I hear you. Yes, that's social. Don't do that. That's social, <laughs> uh, social, social issues, religious issues. Um, um, hey, you better get knocked out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so social issues, religious issues, uh, political issues, just regular relationship issues. So, I, I mean, all of those things I should, I, I'm, I'm, I definitely have a plan on covering throughout my career. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it because I just feel like I, I one of the things I want to be able to do most is be able to tell stories that people connect with, uh, that resonate and that, you know, like I said, can hopefully either change somebody's perspective give them a perspective that, that, that can help change your life. Cause I've been through a lot myself and I could put that into my work and I'm really big on if I made it through it, you can too. Uh, and trying to help somebody else get through what it is that they're going through that. That's really big to me. And I want to do that in my storytelling too. Nice, so there, um, speaking of that, um, you said that you want to help people connect to stuff and I, I feel you and I would never discourage a creator from, from creating, but there's a story that you told me about that you're working on that's just a little too scary um, that I don't think will ever be able to help anybody because nobody's going to be able to get through it. Um, so uh, can you tell us why why you would create something so vile and disgusting and horrifying and how is that supposed to help people? Okay, wait, what are we talking about here? So he's talking about a story that i'm working on called solitary um that is about a young man named michael uh who's possessed possessed by demons by the demons by by the uh, demons not a demon but the, the demons huh? he, i had to get is, close to the demons he he yes he is he is so he is a, a young man that is suffering with uh you know, and that's one of the aspects I want to play with. You know, he's suffering with a demon. It's going to be presented, but you know, in the world, that's another interesting thing. Like one of my one of the shows that I love because they were approaching this topic was, um, uh, God, what's the what's the show with Michael Coulter and um, Luke Cage? Nah, no. Uh, oh, it was uh, on the, where he's like a preacher or something like that. Yes, he was oh. a preacher. I can't remember the name of the show right now. Um, but I, I can't remember the name of the show right now, but I love that show because it approaches. So what we as believers in, in, in the God of Israel and, you know, Jesus and those of us that believe and believe in demons and all those things, we see things, we see schizophrenia as one thing um, and it's defined as one thing in the Bible and science sees it another way. And I want to somewhat, you know, deal with that in, in a, in a, in a um, book, but on a spiritual level, I also want to be able, I want to be able to show it the fight on the spiritual level, but also how that affects things in the regular world for people that don't believe. Um, and so, I mean, the goal of the story is yes, I, now I do have all intentions on scaring the piss out of people like that's because I've always been in scary stuff. I've always been in the scary movies. I've always been intrigued by ghosts and ghost stories and and uh, and other stuff like that and i'm really excited to be able to try my hand at scaring the heck out of people like i've had people scare me um but i also want to tell i had to story. i had to go watch lion king just after him telling me about it i had to like sit and watch the the nicest movie i could find just after the nicest movie the one where the dad gets killed 
and you have to worry about hyenas biting your ass, huh? Yeah, that's was, the nicest movie. About that's the circle of life. A circle of life. Is it about the, the, uh, Lion King is definitely not the scariest. The Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. It's up there. Uh, yeah, Ursula, what? Ursula is terrifying, bro. Ursula is the most terrifying villain I've ever seen. And they're under the sea, so, and they're underwater, bro. You yeah. can't breathe. Nah, Mm-mm. that that scares me in itself. Um, oh, y'all can't swim. Y'all know black folks can't swim. No, I can't. Was racist. That was just racist. I both. I'm gonna say I can both swim. But... Kyron did it first. I just. Was <laughs> <laughs> I would just follow this. I would just follow the script. You know what I mean? Like he he put the script there for a second. I, I followed. I laid it I out there, and y'all just I don't took swim, it. I don't swim I well, no but I can I can manage him water. I had no choice. Um, right. But yeah, solitary. I'm definitely looking forward to releasing. I hope I can get it out this year. Uh, me and Danny got a lot. Yeah, yeah, you you lot. do have a lot. You got the solitary. You got lumberjacks. What else do you have on your plate right now? So uh, Lumberjacks number two and three are both written already. So now, you know, we're in the middle of the campaign for Lumberjacks number two. We think we've got 18 days left. Um, I was literally just working on a, a new trailer for the Stretch Goals uh, trailer for the Lumberjacks page for that. Um, trying to make sure we maximize that campaign because, you know, whatever money that we raise that, that that's over, like we've been blessed to be, we're almost $3,000 over the goal, like, which is, I mean, that's a huge deal. Um, Congrats to you and the team. Thank you, man. Um, look, me and Danny been uh, y'all been man. hustling. Uh, yeah, so it's you know it's it's Morgan it's, Morgan putting in that work, man. I I be trying to tell him. Um, it's Morgan those TikTok video work. dances he be doing. He be getting that, those that's pledges. the one. That was the one, man. Them <laughs> yeah. TikTok dances do it. Hey, sometimes I, I was surprised how many you know. <laughs> I was definitely surprised uh, that that was a thing. Some but, cougars, uh, they trying to support you, man. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm look, I'm single right now. I, I, yeah, oh, I, I, oh. I accept all the love. Uh, I mean, do you want to throw out your social so if anybody wants to maybe hook up, hit sign we'll do that. DMs. We'll do that at the end. We're not oh, gonna okay. do that to my man. We'll do that at the end. <laughs> hey man, listen. Uh we're here to support you in every way possible. That's what this, this that, podcast man. is all about. Hey, I appreciate that. Uh, uh you know, I so yeah, I mean, I got Lumberjacks number two and number three that will definitely be coming out this year. I confirmed with uh, my artists yesterday, and Harlem number one. Those are the three that I'm definitely gonna make sure uh, get out this year, one way or the other one, uh, by hook or crook. Um, and then me and Danny are working on another story, um, uh, Ballad of the Black Rose, that Danny put his foot in. Uh, thus far, we're just developing the rest of it, and I'm really excited to tell that story because of the different. Uh, different genre that's going to be in um, uh, sci-fi else? western, yeah, uh, like East East Me Sweats book or what? Black sci-fi western at that. A black Black sci-fi western, yes. Yeah. That, make sure you put that in uh, the front. Um, what else? Uh, the Super Shorts podcast season four. I'm extremely excited about that because I think we did <laughs> that, that. That script came out way better than. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's let's more, talk about that real quick. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. okay. And I, I I mentioned this to Danny. You particularly, Morgan, when you do your voices for Super Shorts, you really get into that. Like you put yourself in that in each character you voice. Do you have any background in like theater or something? Because you get into that really well. I That's don't just a natural thing. Yeah, I I don't, but I do enjoy it. I I love uh voice acting, and I I mean I. The times that me and Danny have done skits and stuff like that, I do like acting. You know what I mean? Um, I, I do like it. Uh, voice acting is fun for me because I get to, you know, put on somebody else's skin and kind of, I think in order for you to be good at it, you have to be willing to to um, suspend yourself. Like, that's why I really uh, respect, uh, like Heath Ledger's Joker is one of my favorite roles that I've ever seen. Uh, because, you know, I don't know Heath as a, as a normal person, but my, I mean, he was so insanely brilliant and, and, and he made that character something we've ever seen before. Um, Denzel and Train Today, like I legit thought he was insane. Uh, like I was like, Denzel has gone off the rails, like real talk. Um, people that can, that can, that can transform like that uh, into completely new people uh or like denzel see now denzel always keeps the same accent so <laughs> he's like he always has the same ditch and he always sounds the exact same but he's still powerful in all his movies like a don Cheadle, i've seen don Cheadle on black monday 
versus you seeing him in Hotel Rwanda. Like he is one of the most underrated actors that was a good on movie. Earth. And Captain Planet, that Captain Planet he did was no. Don't yeah, don't oh, disrespect yeah. Cheeto with Captain Planet. That, I mean that's funny, but we're, Hotel Rwanda <laughs> was an amazing movie. Yeah, but that, yeah, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. Don Cheeto, I don't care what role you bring to him, he will destroy it. You know what I'm saying? And he will and he will literally become another person uh, in those movies. And that is you know when I voice act. If I'm not doing that, then I feel like I'm doing it a disservice. And at that point, if I don't believe in my character and I'm not going to give it what I got, then why am I doing it? You know what I mean? So, um, and I, I look forward to voice acting more. You know, um, if we do a live thing of solitary, I'm definitely going to enjoy uh, doing the voices for that. Um, Danny over here shaking his head. No, he's too scared to help you out with that. I won't be there for it. I mean, you can use the studio, but I'm going to have you have to bring some of the preachers holy oil after something because I. That's so racist. I refuse. That's racist. Um, but yeah, I, I'm. I, I do. I do definitely enjoy it. And I, I mean, I, look, I hope to, to get the chance. Me and Danny wrote a short film that at some point we're gonna um, film, and I'm gonna have yeah. them all doing that. Man, we got we got so much stuff, but you know, we'll we'll get there eventually, man. We just need some. <laughs> we need to move out there with Kyron, where all the connections are. I know, right? Hey, uh, you can live in my backyard if you want. You pay rent. That's what I'm talking about. I can't. I can't afford four four uh, inches of land out there where y'all at, bro. It's yeah, ridiculous. It's all it's, the way through. A one bedroom apartment in Sacramento right now is over a thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. for a one bedroom apartment. Yeah, y'all can have it. <laughs> I mean, Durham is getting there. Uh, yeah, Durham. Yeah, you're right. Durham, Durham is getting ridiculous. Durham prices are insane uh, at the moment. Like I'm literally trying to just throw money at something and get something before it's all gone um wait sidebar please. how much is your guys' uh gas right now because i remember we had that little thing on tiktok where we were like 240 cool. 350 yeah about 240 something what y'all like four you, dollars you okay Kyle? you all right are you all right you okay? <laughs> how much is your gas like four dollars five don't say five i can't i couldn't imagine what it would be out there with y'all yeah he took the headphones out and everything guys i paid four Four dollars thirty cents a gallon, yeah. The other mm. day, oh, that don't make no sense, bro. No, nah, we, we ain't been there in a long time. I Stay mean, in the I'm, house, telework <laughs> for now. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Get one of them, uh, them scooters. I know y'all got them. It's Silicon Valley's, like right down the street. So no, get you, a, get you a Tesla. Quit playing. Right. Get, okay, quit Silicon playing Valley is like Tesla. three hours from me. Three, four same hours. Thing. Bro. Same thing. Same thing. Bro. Charlotte, Charlotte's three hours from me. So, yeah, it's like I'm gonna spend my my gallon of gas I just bought getting down there to get the scooter. No, bro, you, <laughs> you, you just uh you know take like a train and you know something else fancy y'all got y'all got fancy stuff. Just I do have my airplane in the backyard, so I could probably take that. Yeah, or I could take my horse. You know. Yeah. 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 Concrete Gallop. cowboy. Gallop on out there. You'll be all right. Concrete cowboys out this hole. Do it. You got it. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, we off the rails on this one now. All right, so let's talk about Lumberjack because I've always wanted to know why did he have a giant axe? Like, is there anything particular as far as the concept that you're like, I want him to have a giant battle axe? So when I was coming up with what weapon I wanted him to have, I didn't want him to have a weapon that everybody else had, but I also had to, um, I also had to make a decision. I knew if he's carrying a big axe, uh made out of dicarbonite steel like in our universe uh dicarbonite steel is one of the strongest if not the strongest i don't know if me and danny determined that but it's extremely strong and extremely sharp um it's like a vibranium adamantium level strong I, I wouldn't say vibranium because it doesn't oh, at well I, you got me you see you're trying to make me give away trade secrets <laughs> uh it's strong. Um, it's strong. It's, it's extremely it. strong. It's yeah. It's extremely strong. Uh, it's the strongest. They, it's the strongest. Um, is it? Are we calling it like a natural element, or is it like the? Uh, no, it's an alloy because it's uh, the strongest he, alloy he that we have now. Yeah, D, D, DL, DL made it. So uh, Ace Blade getting one of them, getting one of them blades. Yeah, at, at some point, like DL doesn't hate Ace Blade. Jacks just dislikes him strongly. Um, so. And that's something else that we'll, you know, get at in the podcast this this year, this season, which I'm excited about too. But um, the biggest reason he has the axe is because, so like, I wanted to come up with a weapon that I could use that would differentiate him. But at the same time, like, I had to make a decision on, all right, if he's going to use the axe that's sharp, you can't just go around cutting up regular people. 
with that ass all the time. Um, and that was a hard, that was to me in the beginning, that was a hard decision, like how I'm going to delineate that. But now I was like, yeah, never mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, if you, if you ask for smoke with Jax, uh, he's going to give you a puff, a, a huge puff, you know what I'm saying? Of, of the smoke. So, um, like the puff, puff pass. Yeah, puff plus yeah puff puff, puff they puff, pass. no pass puff, 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 puff they pass yes that's exactly it uh but in the story uh and it's a huge axe because jackson sits foot eight so uh he it, in order for it to be a battle axe he can't be he does have hatchets though he has two two uh hatchet blades called bow and rj's yeah i haven't uh, seen them in the comics yet though so yeah, y'all haven't, they haven't come up in the comics yet um but uh and they're they're smaller he named the big axe timber um and uh it actually was passed down to him story-wise it's passed down from his uh it's a, it's a family thing uh without me spoiling too much but you no, go it. ahead Spoil i didn't, know that. Thing. I didn't uh, know that yeah so uh his uh in the origin this is a I, secret from the four tales podcast that morgan's about to reveal something about the <laughs> timber weapon go ahead morgan exclusive exclusive uh, exclusive so in the, in the origin in the origin novel, when you read chapter one, you will see what it is. Not me. Uh, I, I already told you there's a coup that happens. Uh, I don't think it takes away from the story. There's a coup that happens in Ethiopia, which is why he had to leave. When the coup takes place, uh, Jax and his family are royalty, but they also are bosses. This is not a, a game to them. They, Jax has been trained since he was a kid uh, to fight to fight with weapons and to not hesitate to you know defend himself if he has to. And the family is forced to defend themselves. Um, his grandfather uses a battle axe, and he adores his grandfather, and that's one of the reasons that he carries the axe. So when you read the novel, you'll you'll see the full depth of uh, that connection too, because um, that's his grandfather's obvious, honestly one of the biggest influences in his life, and that's one of the reasons that Jax is in the place that he's in mentally now. Uh, his grandfather's the one that told him about his mantle. Uh, but Jax is still running from it because of what happened to his grandfather. So um, he still hasn't, he, he's dealt with the trauma kind of, but his life went off the rails so bad that you, I think all of us have some aspect of that. You know what I'm saying? Your life can go, you, you know that there's something that you need to deal with, or you might have PTSD. Maybe you lost somebody, maybe you lost an opportunity, whatever. And you need it. You need to deal with it and kind of cope with it. But life, comes at you fast and now you got new things that you have to deal with immediately that then take on and then you have to like kind of circle back around the things and uh Jax is in the process of that in the comics so um yeah for the ads read the origin novel you'll see what's up i like it <laughs> it's been fun fellas uh you got any other questions for him nah, i'm good i'm trying to um yeah i, I was trying to come up with one more but i didn't want to <laughs> I want to put my man on blast too, too, too much this morning. Blast the wave, sir. I, you know, I got dicarbonite skill, still draws. And, you know, yeah. Speaking of draws, then, um, the ladies right. on on the Facebook have been requesting a stimmy package from you, sir. They've been oh, saying God. that they are willing to put in the funds mm. if you are willing to go the distance. <sighs> um, the Kickstarter is over seven thousand dollars funded right now. Mm. Are you going to give the ladies what they want? Uh, as soon as they show me that they will give to those tears, I will absolutely do that. Uh, but I, everybody keeps saying it, but I ain't seen no action. I ain't seen no money. When I see the money, you know what I'm saying? If you walk into a strip club, you know what I'm saying? If it's players club or whatever, bro, listen, they not, you know, they might go up on the stage, you know what I'm saying? But if you throw in a bunch of ones and you think you're going to the VIP room, it just don't happen like that. This is a VIP room conversation, okay? okay. You know All right. So you're not about to just get me out here in these streets, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think if anything, this would be like an OnlyFans conversation. Yeah, well, that's that's where it came from originally. But the point is, you got to pay for OnlyFans. Is that's my point? So I'm not about to be out just out here in these streets, you know what I'm saying? Making a shimmy for the stimmy, bro. That's not gonna happen. You better, you know what I'm saying? If they come with the loot, then you know. I'm, well, you heard it here first. You heard, you heard it here, ladies. Uh, go ahead and uh, put those pledges in so you can get the shimmy for the stimmy. Uh, thank you for. Oh, no, I'm gonna let you do the outro. I'm gonna let you do the outro, Kyra. Oh, oh. wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's it, Morgan. So, 
<laughs> so we appreciate you coming by being our first guest on this um why don't you go ahead and tell us where we can reach you online and tell us where you can get your kickstarter at uh so a kickstarter you can look it up by my name you can look it up by danny's name you can look it up by lumberjacks i'm pretty sure if you type in lumberjacks in itself uh then that will take you to it or you can go to any of my social media so i'm morgan iverson on facebook uh lumberjacks well, that's when your facebook is actually well up and not banned right uh yeah you, you had, had to do it that, didn't you? you had, you had to put that in there didn't you uh yeah yep yeah um if uh if, when i'm not banned uh for mediocre terrible really dumb reasons uh you know then yes you could catch me and morgan iverson on facebook lumberjacks on uh ig and uh twitter uh the only difference that you put uh, the e and lumber uh is a three um and you can find me on twitter and, and uh, ig and on tiktok i think tiktok i just have a space in between the lumberjacks um but yeah those are my social media sites i am going to be looking to i have a twitch but i think i'm going to start a new one to try to have some continuity on names uh and i'll make sure i'll make an announcement once that uh once i figure out what it's going to be all right well that's cool cool well um thank you again for being on this and on our podcast and you know much luck to you i mean you're already successful i mean we try to get to those what's the next stretch goal like what's the amount on it yeah 7500 is the fish fish fish, fish, fish uh fry. fish plate yeah and how far fish away are you from that we are a little bit under 500 dollars. i think you got that you got that hey look, uh, yeah yeah when when we get to 7500 dollars, everybody's getting their their very own um vial of holy oil from the preacher himself and uh also the digital copies of uh hot shot number one and the surgeon so uh and the surgeon is definitely a kickstarter to, to go back immediately because uh Lori and uh john put their foot in that per usual and uh there's definitely a great campaign so uh yeah. go back I actually and- just read the first the first two issues like I, i've had them for a while but i just read them and they're, and they're really good but we'll talk about some actual comics next time on the next episode yeah all right. Well, thank you, everybody. And Danny, thank you again for being part of this podcast, man. Anything you want to tell the people before we go? Nah, man, I'm just happy to be here, man. I appreciate you uh, making this platform. And it's fun talking to already having a lot of fun talking to creators and uh, getting to ask these hard hitting questions. <laughs> All right. Well, where, where can we get you and find you at, Danny? Oh, well, y'all know me. Uh, the Ace Blade on Ace Blade on uh, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. All right. And you can find me at uh, TaurusComics.com, um, at Taurus Comics on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find the Four Tales podcast at FourTalesPodcast.com. That's the number four, T-A-L-E-S, and then podcast.com. Uh, thank you, everybody, for checking out this episode. And have a great weekend. Music provided by Quick Made It. That's Q U I X K M A D E I T. Find on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of them.